Sketchy. 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 Janky. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. This was only temporary so I can get the power supply on the 240 volts and be quiet because on 120, yeah, this thing's loud as can be. But we're going to go ahead and build it into this. Okay, so we're going to rebuild that janky setup into this box today. And this was manufactured by a guy called Space Goats. That's what he likes to call himself. Right there. He's got his own nice little label and everything. Thanks, Space Goats. Um, these units cost $30 shipped in the United States only. He doesn't do overseas shipping. Sorry, costs too much and too much of a pain in the butt. But for everyone who's in the United States, he makes these power monitor boxes. If you haven't seen them before... They're used in the mining community, but you can pretty much use them anywhere you want to. They, I originally saw them showcased on Red Panda Mining's YouTube channel because he absolutely loves these things. Now, Space Goats makes these 3D printed at home, and he has two different front covers. This one I bought has for the monitor and a 240-volt L6-30 plug. He also does make one that has a smaller square cutout, uh, I believe, yeah, I believe it is a square cutout for a dual 120 outlet if that's your flavor that you want to go with. But he puts a um, gland down here at the bottom, a wire gland, and it comes out with these four pieces. I've already built this nice little holder for it, which we'll see exactly how this works when we're done building it. So first off, let's take off the four screws to get into it. It should just be an empty box. Okay. Nice. He's got a nice little fitment ring around it, too. Wow, I didn't even know that. Yeah, so it lines up really nice. He's actually got metal inserts that he put in here. Wow. Check that out. I did not realize he did that with this box. But yes, it's just a big open cavity, but it's made specifically for this intended use. So let me go ahead and rip apart my janky, sketchy setup that's over there by my rig, and we'll bring the parts over here and assemble this. So, before we actually put this together, I just wanted to quickly state, I am not a licensed electrician. I know what I'm doing, mostly, but do not directly copy what I do in my video. This is for informational and, uh, I guess, educational or at least entertainment value, just so you get a general idea of what you're doing. I might be doing something wrong, but it gives you the general idea of how to put this together. And I am not liable, regardless, if you blow up your cat, blow up your wife, or blow up your house and kill yourself in the process. I don't want to hear it. So, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and put this together. So, I got the socket sitting right here. I got the display sitting right here. Let's go ahead and put the socket in first, which is really easy. I'm going to push this out of the way for a moment. Yeah, he set that up perfectly. He even got the cutouts for it right there. Made specifically for this socket. And we just screw these two in here. So let's go ahead and do that. Now the screws that came with the socket itself seem to be just a little bit too long for working with his uh, front plate here. So I did source from my uh, handy dandy, yeah, mix it up jar. Two shorter screws of the same... Uh, thickness and thread count and all that good stuff so I think we're good to go now that looks nice I like that perfect so yep there's the socket so now let's move on to the display now the display as you buy it has this little wonky looking choke thing which we're going to use here in a minute this is how it actually measures how much power is going through your 240 volt line or 120 volt if that's the case but we're doing 240 today, so I'm going to show you 240. Now, I put on these two extra wires here. The diameter for this really doesn't matter. You can probably even get away with using 20 gauge if you really got that crazy. Use thicker if you can. Basically, what these two wires do is the actual power supply, voltage input 
to power this unit and just so it knows what voltage it's working with. It probably only pulls a few milliamps from these lines. It's just enough so it knows what voltage it's working with and to power the unit itself. That's all it is. So there's no current actually going through here. The current passes through when you put a wire in between this coil. That's it. There's no direct current going through this circuit. So just make sure whatever wire you use is rated for the voltage you're going to use. Like this is rated for 250 volts. We're good. So the way this should work in theory is I might have to take these wires off first. Darn, I hate theory. Yeah, let me take these wires off first and we can push it in. Okay, and let's take these two off as well. Don't worry when taking off these two wires from the coil, there is no polarity. So when you plug it back in, you can plug it in either which way, it doesn't matter. So now we have these little two tabs that it should catch on perfectly fine. And she should, in theory, just slide in there, but we might have to do a little bit of fine tuning from what he said to make it fit. Because remember, this is 3D printed, so there is some tolerances to it. And I think I'm going to have to do a little bit of trimming on mine. I'm not sure. It's getting really close. Yeah, I think I got to do a little bit of a quick shave here. Not a big deal. Let me go uh, bust out the Dremel. Okay, I have it trimmed down a little bit with a razor blade, some sandpaper, a Dremel, yeah, everything. Just trimmed the whole way around there a little bit. Plus, broke off the little tabs that were sitting on the side here that are supposed to lock it in. Yeah, it's just not made for that. So, here we go. See, now it fits. And before we finish this, we're just going to run a quick little bead of super glue around here to permanently mount it into his frame. Okay, so now we should be able to slide this in here perfectly for the last time. Nice. Yep, let that set for like 20, 30 minutes or so and then we'll keep going. Okay. Now on the bottom of the unit, let's first reattach the little coil. So the coil, CT secondary, goes back over here onto the blue side. And then your nice little flexible wire. That is rated for whatever voltage you're using. I mean, this unit is good for AC, 40 volts to 300 volts. So yeah, I need to make sure I had wire that was rated for 240 volts. Now, the way this plug works is it's going to be a real pain in the butt to tighten those screws <laughs> because I put the monitor in first. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have to take this back out temporarily just so we can connect the wires. I just realized that. It's going to be kind of hard to uh, tighten those two posts. <laughs> okay, now that we have this out, the L630 plug has three conductors, two hot and a ground. There's no neutral in this unit. That will be for a dryer outlet, which has four conductors. We're only messing with three. So you have green, ground, hot one, hot two. Doesn't matter which hot is hot. They're both hot. So what we're going to do is take one of these and each one of these goes to a hot. Now here's where it gets a little more fun and you got to juggle. Put that to the side momentarily. Bring your box over here and zoom out. Zoom out. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you need your wire that you're going to go through. It needs to go through this gland wire. And I'm telling you, 10 2 wire is really thick and hard to bend. I don't even know if this gland will work with the hard stuff. Oh, it went through, at least that part. Okay, so now we got the wire through. Now we got to do the wiring. So let's tip this down here, bring this over here. Try to make a mess out of everything, which I'm doing a wonderful job at. 
uh, get enough wire through here that I can play with it. Ugh. Okay, good. So, let's connect the ground first. Ground is always the easiest. Let's get hot one. And hot two. Ah. Okay, looks like I'm going to have to juggle here. Let's connect hot one and one of these wires and screw that down first, and then we'll get hot two. Okay, that one's secure. Now let's play with hot two. And this really helps bending this wire. There we go. Okay, there's that. Let's bring this wire up over and around. Make sure there's no frays. The last thing you want is 240 volts shorting out somewhere. And you can see how you can get a hot and another wire on both sides. Now tighten that down. Really freaking good. The coil must go through. Like that, one of the hots, and that's how it reads. Let's put this back together the right way. Okay, let's do the exclamation again. Ground is green right here, right from your supply line. I have two hots, one is a white, one is a gray right down here. Let's see if I can twist it. Yeah, right there. There's my other hot. The two power lines from the display come on over and attach to each hot. The coil goes around one of the hot wires. Doesn't matter which one, just one of the hot wires. That's how it reads. So now that this is all done, I can put the, uh, this back together. Okay, so. That's all it looks like in the back here. Let's see if I can twist it around. And yeah, it's fully assembled. Now we need to get this all squeezed back down into the box here. Okay, so we are nicely sealed. We have a box. Now we gotta finish up with the gland here. There's this little piece of rubber that fell out. It's supposed to go inside here. There we go. And this piece comes on down here and it will clamp down on the wire, keep it from getting yanked out or anything. Yeah, that wire's not gonna get yanked in or out now. That actually clamped down onto it and holds it nice and steady. So for my application, I'm going to be putting a ton of magnets on this side. I'll show you why in a second. And this is why I put a bunch of magnets on it. This is the side of my cabinet and there's my rig right above it. So I ran the orange supply line straight down, wrapped around, and it is magnetized onto right here and holds it beautifully. So let's go ahead and turn the breaker on and get some power to this unit. Okay, and another thing before we plug in the rig, I love the fact that this unit actually retains when you lose power, this uh, information it had. Like I was at 69.67 kilowatt hours before I shut off the breaker to build this unit correctly. Also, if you need a reset, there is a little reset. You hold this little pin that's kind of hidden right here for five seconds and it will reset it. Let's see if I get focus. There you go, you can see it right there. There's a little pin right there you hit with a pen for five seconds and it will reset this. So I reset mine on a monthly basis. So let's go ahead and plug in the rig now. There we go. We are now plugged in. We got our orange light on the server power supply. So let's go ahead and turn this on and wake up the whole rig.
So that is how you basically build Space Goat's little power monitor setup box thingy. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. I will have links in the description below for Space Goat so you can order the box if you want from him. He also has on his Discord where you do the ordering from the list of other parts that you need. Like you need to buy the socket and the monitor. He can help you with that. I will have that down below. If you are interested in my crazy little uh, neodymium pancake magnets, I will also leave a link for that down below. Thumbs up, please. Share the video around the mining community because a lot of people are buying this and don't know how to put it together. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.